When you're pregnant, there's all kinds of things you're not supposed to do, but what happens if you use cannabis? We're gonna look at the real risk of using cannabis while you're pregnant, backed up by the science, so you will have all the knowledge you need to make informed decisions that keep you and your baby safe. And the little YouTube babies do not like my content, so we gotta tell them this video is for educational and informative purposes only. This video does not condone the use of any substance and does not violate any YouTube community guidelines. And I'm not a doctor, so make sure you always consult a professional before you make any decisions. So people use cannabis while they're pregnant for many different reasons, but one of the most common is just to manage pregnancy symptoms like nausea and vomiting. About 70% of the people in this study said that is why they used cannabis while pregnant. But some people also use it for anxiety, pain, or to help them sleep. And while this can provide some relief to the mom, this cannabis also affects the baby and the way it grows. The little baby fetus gets all of its nutrients and oxygen from its mom's blood. And everything that is in the mom's blood can affect the baby too, including cannabis. The blood from the mom gets filtered through the placenta before it goes to the baby, but it isn't magic and it doesn't catch everything. That means when a mom uses cannabis, their fetus is basically using cannabis too. And when a pregnant mom uses cannabis, their baby's bloodstream is thought to have anywhere from 2.5 to 6 times less THC than their own which is still a good amount. And it isn't just THC, because cannabis has over a hundred different compounds that can have a wide range of effects on the neurotransmitters and receptors in your brain. And we still don't have all of the research to know exactly how all of that stuff works, not even in the adult brain. So in an ideal study, researchers could just take a large group of pregnant people and pick a group of them to use cannabis so they could compare their babies and their pregnancies to the control group. But since cannabis is federally illegal and there's good suspicion to believe that it can cause harm, they just can't do that. So instead, they have to do observational studies where they just simply observe people who choose to use cannabis during their pregnancy on their own. Which isn't a perfect method because people who choose to use cannabis on their own during pregnancy could be different than people that choose not to use cannabis during their pregnancy in some important ways that could affect the study. But that doesn't mean we don't have any studies, and the research we do have makes me wonder if my mom smoked weed while she was pregnant. But before we dive into all of this research, we should cover a huge risk of using cannabis while pregnant that I haven't even mentioned yet. And that is child protective services. This is a big concern. Because even though the science side is far from being completely figured out, the legal side has already made their mind up and you could face some very serious charges for this. 25 states and DC consider substance abuse while pregnant to be straight up child abuse. And they require healthcare professionals to report suspected drug use from pregnant moms. And eight states actually require pregnant moms to do prenatal drug tests. And hospitals will often do their own drug tests and report drug use to child welfare agencies, even when it isn't required by the state you live in. And they can't test the mom without their consent, but they can test the baby. And if you recently used cannabis while pregnant, the baby can easily test positive for cannabis too. So not only can a new mom face legal charges and lose custody of their baby, these laws also cause doctors and pregnant patients to just sort of avoid the topic of cannabis use. The mom doesn't want to get in trouble or lose their kids, and the doctor doesn't want to get involved because they usually aren't really sure what they are legally required to do are like what they just should do if they find out their patient is using cannabis. So that means a lot of times this topic just doesn't get discussed and new moms are left to do all this research for themselves. So let's look at what the research actually says. And since we're limited on the research that has been done, first we'll start with a study on animals. This study was done on rats because rats have the same CB1 and CB2 cannabis receptors in their brains that humans do. These receptors in our brain are how cannabis interacts with our body's own natural endocannabinoid system. But scientists found that when the rat's developing brain was exposed to cannabis in utero, that the wiring of that entire natural system can evolve differently than in baby rats that had no cannabis exposure. And these rats that were born to cannabis exposed moms and had these differences in the way their brain was formed also had significant behavioral changes too. The weed rats couldn't remember, learn, or pay attention 
attention as well as the other rats. They were more anxious, they were less sociable, and they even said they could be more prone to opioid addiction. And that does sound scary, and it is possible that some or all of these same things could happen in human babies too. But just because it happens in rats, that still isn't exactly proof. So now let's look at what the human studies say and why some experts say that even these human studies aren't reliable. Lots of our human research comes from three main observational studies that followed the progress of babies exposed to cannabis from 1982 to 2006. These three studies are the most popular ones we have, and they showed some worrying outcomes that can be best summarized by breaking down what effects were noticed at each age group. Toddlers were shown to have decreased attention, poor sleep, and a worse memory. Six-year-olds had more hyperactivity and impulsivity and decreased concentration. Preteens had more depression, poorer verbal reasoning, worse concentration, and more delinquency. And that all sounds really bad, and I don't want to just dismiss all of that, but the results of these studies have been called into question. This is a review article that was published in 2020 called Totality of the Evidence Suggests Prenatal Cannabis Exposure Does Not Lead to Cognitive Impairments, a Systematic and Critical Review. In this review, a group of experts looked at all the evidence that we have been collecting since the mid-1980s. And the review authors called out a lot of these studies for just having weak study methods. Like a lot of these researchers didn't even compare the outcomes that they were researching to any kind of standard that could account for things like the age of the parents or the parents' education level. So they said, what if the kids that were exposed to cannabis before birth were also just born to parents that had a lower level of education compared to the other babies? Or what if they had younger parents than the other kids? Because all of these things could be responsible for some of the differences we see in those studies. The review said, cannabis exposed groups overwhelmingly fell within the normal range when compared against normative data adjusted for age and education. It went on to say, the findings of this critical review indicate that prenatal cannabis exposure is associated with few effects on the cognitive functioning of offspring. And the conclusion of this review said, the current evidence does not suggest that prenatal cannabis exposure alone is associated with clinically significant cognitive functioning impairments. And we have seen this before, especially in older studies on cannabis. They just start off with the mindset of, we bad, so they try to prove that weed bad, rather than going in open-minded and doing accurate research until they found out the true answer. But now we have even newer research from the ABCD study. The latest research published in 2022 from a study called the Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development Study involved following 12,000 patients from birth and seeing how their brains developed. And in this study, they compared three different groups. Group one was moms who only used cannabis before they learned they were pregnant, but then stopped when they found out. Group two was moms who used cannabis before and after they learned they were pregnant. And group three was the group of moms who didn't use cannabis at all. The findings indicate that the longer mothers used cannabis during pregnancy, the more likely their children were to experience health issues as they approach their teenage years. These problems included behavioral issues, aggression, and irritability. The study also showed that only women who continued cannabis use during pregnancy showed these developmental and mental health problems whereas those who stopped upon discovering their pregnancy or never used cannabis at all did not exhibit these issues. And as I was editing this video, this brand new 2023 review was published in the journal Addiction, examining 57 studies with almost 13 million infant participants. And over 100,000 babies were found to have been exposed to cannabis in the womb. The good news is they did not identify an increased risk of birth defects or infant death. That's good, but 
mothers using marijuana during pregnancy were 2.6 times more likely to give birth to babies with low birth weight, potentially leading to challenges in eating, weight gain, and infection resistance. Low birth weight is a significant predictor of long-term health and developmental issues, including developmental delays, ADHD, learning disabilities, and emotional problems. And the meta-analysis showed that infants exposed to cannabis in the womb exhibited poorer attention spans and more behavioral problems in infancy and early childhood. Furthermore, mothers using cannabis were 1.7 times more likely to experience premature delivery, with associated risk of respiratory, cardiac, and developmental complications. Infants born to mothers using marijuana were 2.5 times more likely to require intensive care, which really shows just how bad it is that people can't talk about these things openly with their doctors. And I do get it if you're still skeptical because of that research paper we looked at because it did say the evidence does not suggest that cannabis exposure alone is associated with significant functioning impairments. And I left a link to that research paper and everything else I've cited in this video down in the description if you want to read it because it does bring up some good points. But we can't just completely toss out all of the other research because of that. Most experts assume that the potential risk of fetal harm from pre natal cannabis exposure are high enough to support recommending against recreational cannabis use. But recreational cannabis use isn't the only type of cannabis use, and like we mentioned before, most pregnant people are using cannabis medicinally to treat some type of symptom. And even though cannabis may have some risk, it could be safer than lots of alternatives. Just hear me out. For example, if a pregnant person was using cannabis to treat their pain instead of using opioids, which one do you think is going to be better? What if a pregnant person was using cannabis to help them sleep instead of taking some pharmaceutical? Or maybe just instead of not getting good sleep. Do the benefits of good sleep outweigh the risk related to cannabis? Is it less risky than the pills? Even that is hard to say in most cases because most of the pharmaceutical medications we have haven't even been assessed for their safety during pregnancy. But we do know from other research like this that young people shouldn't use cannabis because of how it negatively affects their brain, so it makes perfect sense to me that babies probably shouldn't be exposed to it either. But what if you're not exposing the baby directly to cannabis? Like what if you're just going somewhere where other people are smoking, like maybe a concert? Or what if you weren't even pregnant, you were just at a concert smoking like normal and then some guy comes up like, hey, I'm a new dad and my wife is here and she's pregnant and you can't be smoking that stuff here. Then what do you do? Are you in the wrong or is the pregnant lady in the wrong? This actually happened and you can see the whole story in this video. This guy was so mad about a little bit of weed. Very, very much.